Let's get started on today's notes over graphing linear functions. This is a review for Algebra 2, so I do have Algebra 1 notes and videos if you need to go at a slower pace. So first, I'd like to review slope and rate of change. So first off, linear functions are functions with a constant rate of change, which means that in the table is an example of a linear function, a constant change in x corresponds to a constant change in y. So we have our x values on the left hand of our table and the y values on our right side. And you can see that my change in y values is down 50 every single time. It's a constant rate of change. It's down 50 every single time. And that corresponds to this constant change in x values over here. And let's erase that because it's a little bit messy. So these are known as first differences. And this is big in Algebra 2 because we'll talk about first differences and eventually we'll move on to second differences. So these are known as first differences. So slope is known in Algebra 2. This is how it's written quite a bit. It's got this delta symbol, which is this little triangle right here, and that means change in y over change in x. So as you can see in the table, the change in my y values is negative 50, and the change in my x values is positive 1. So if I write that as a fraction, it's negative 50 over 1, which we can simplify to just negative 50. So my slope is negative 50. And if you want to get specific and talk about your rate of change, if you need some kind of units, it's miles per hour. So in this situation, whatever it is, it's negative 50 miles per hour. So let's now move on to slope on a graph and slope from two points. So slope is defined as the steepness and direction of a line. So I can visually see on a graph when a slope is positive, it's rising from left to right. When a slope is negative, it's falling from left to right. So let's first look at examples one and two right here. So on a graph, rise over run. So rise is our vertical change, which guess what? That's our change in y values. And the run is our horizontal change, which is the change in our x values. So I pick two points on my line where I can see where it crosses two of these integers and my change in y values to get from one point to the next, I'm gonna go up one and over two. So up one and over two, my slope would be one over two. Now in example number two, that's a negative slope. And some students have a huge issue with this. I like to tell my students, if you can visually see that this slope is negative because it falls from left to right, you automatically know your slope is gonna be negative. Now let's figure out your change in y values and your change in x values. So again, I'm gonna find two points where this line intersects those two integers, if you will, integer lines on my coordinate plane, and I'm gonna go down two and then write one, two, three. Down two and write three. That's negative two over three. So the vertical change is two and the horizontal change is three. Now three and four, these are specific um, slopes. If you have a horizontal line, your slope is actually zero. That's zero slope. It is, it has zero value, but it is the number zero. So a horizontal line, your slope is zero, which means a vertical line, your slope is actually undefined. Which brings us to is the line on number four, is this even a function? It's not even a function. So it is undefined. Let's move on to five and six, slope from two points. So slope from two points, when we're calculating the slope, when we're given two points, we're gonna use our slope formula, which is y2 minus y1. What am I doing right here? Slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, this is our change in y values over our change in x values. When we subtract our y values, we get the difference. We get the change. So in Algebra 1, I have my students label x1, y1, x2, y2. I don't do that in Algebra 2. You should know that 
your x that an ordered pair is written x comma y so just subtract your y values in a certain order and then subtract your x values in that same order so i like to do this 10 minus 7 that's the order that i subtracted those in which means i need to subtract my x's in the same order 5 minus 1. so 10 minus 7 is 3 and 5 minus 1 is 4 so the slope of this line would be 3 over 4. if we graphed these two points on the coordinate plane or the cartesian plane and we pick two points just like we did over here with these graphs we would get a slope of three over four this is just how we do it with two points so now let's do the same thing for number six i'm going to do five minus two over negative three be careful about this minus negative three and i'm going to go kind of slowly on this one so five minus two is three negative three minus negative three is negative three plus three which is three over what? Zero, can you divide by zero? You cannot. So this is an example of a line with a slope that is undefined or it has no slope. So if you have, draw a circle with a line through it, that, that does not mean zero, it means empty set. So no slope. So here's an example where when you're given two points, if I graph these two points on the coordinate plane, for example, let's change colors here. Well, let's do this if I graph these two points it would be at negative 3 2 and then negative 3 5 and if I connected those two points I would get a vertical line so that is just an example of a line with an undefined slope so now let's move on to graphing so the most basic and easiest way to graph a line on a coordinate plane or a Cartesian plane is in slope intercept form. So f of x equals mx plus b. Again, f of x is just fancy schmancy for y. And actually, I'm going to change colors here since I have that color in there. Let's see, what am I going to change it to this time? Um, let's do this. Let's do, well, I've got purple there too. I'll do that. Okay, so f of x is just fancy schmancy for y. X right, or I'm sorry, M right here represents our slope. So the number that is in front of the X is your slope, also known as your rate of change. Anytime a question asks you for your rate of change, that means slope. And then your B is your Y intercept. That is your beginning point. You're gonna graph this first. So in these first two examples, we have lines that are written in slope intercept form. So on number seven, y equals two thirds x plus six, or that's just f of x equals two thirds x plus six. I'm gonna graph this six first. That's my y intercept. Here's my y axis. So starting at my origin, I'm gonna go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's my beginning point. That's my new starting point. This line has been shifted up six units. And then my slope, I'm gonna rise two and run three. I know that this slope right here is positive, so I know that my graph, when I graph it, my line is gonna be from lower left to upper right. If I graph it, like whenever you're done graphing, you wanna check, you know, if you graph the line and it looks like that, hey, you graphed in the wrong direction. So um, just, you just graphed in the wrong direction. So just re-graph it. All right, so my slope is from that new point at zero six, I'm gonna go up two and over three up two and over three and i like to put as many points on this coordinate plane as possible so from that point i can also go down two and to the left three down two to the left three down two and i'm just going to connect these points and there's my line let's move on to number eight y equals negative three fourths x minus five and you know what i'm probably going to change these to f of x it's just what you see more in algebra 2 so f of x equals negative 3 fourths x minus 5 so what am I going to graph first I'm going to graph this y intercept at negative 5 so from my origin I'm going to go again y intercept here's my y axis down 1 2 3 4 5 and then my slope is negative 
3 fourths, which means when all is said and done, this line should look like that. It's going to fall from left to right. So I can go down 3 and to the right 4, but you can always go up 3 and to the left 4. And again, up 3 and to the left 4, and it, because it's a constant rate of change, if I do that every time, up 3 over 4, up 3 over 4, up 3, or down 3 over 4, down 3, it's a constant rate of change. It's going to make a straight line. All right, so let's move on to the last two examples for these notes. And this is an example that's in standard form. It's just another way to write a linear equation. A, B, and C are real numbers. A and B are both not zero. So in standard form, I don't graph in standard form. I'm going to graph in slope-intercept form. So what I need to do is convert these to slope-intercept form, which means I'm going to solve for Y. So let's do that. So on number nine, I want to solve for y, so I need to move this entire x term over first. To do that, I'm going to subtract it, so I get negative x plus 8. Again, if this is, um, if, if I'm going too fast for you in this video, I'm going to put a little link to my uh, linear functions playlist for Algebra 1. It, it just has videos that are broken down at a much slower pace. So now I need to get y all by itself, so I need to divide everything by 2 which means I'm going to get negative 1 over 2 times x plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. So now I have this line written in slope-intercept form, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that we just did. I'm going to graph my y-intercept first, which is positive 4, or 0, 4 is the point on the coordinate plane, and my slope is negative 1 over 2. So I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down one over two, and I'm just going to keep putting points on this line. I can also go up one over two, up one over two, and there's the points on this line. When I connect them, they make a straight line, which if I have a pen and paper, I like to put a straight edge up to it and make as straight of a line as possible just because I'm a math teacher and that's just the way that I am. So let's move on to number 10. I need to get y all by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the entire x term over. So when I do that, I get negative 5x plus 6. Now why would I write it in this order with the x term written first? Well, that is the correct order in which I write it, and that leads nicely into slope-intercept form. The slope is going to be the number that's in front of the x. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2, and when I divide by negative 2, this becomes positive, 5 over 2x, 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So have you seen any types of, or I guess any, any um, relationship between this standard form and the slope? So if this is a and this is b, your slope is negative a over b. So a over b would be 5 over negative 2, and negative that would be positive 5 over 2. There's your slope. So that's every single time. Your slope is negative a over b when it's written in standard form. So let's now graph this line. The first thing I'm going to do is graph my y-intercept at negative 3. So I'm going to go down to 0, negative 3, and then my slope is positive 5 over 2. So that's 2.5. That's a number that's greater than 1, which means my slope is going to be steeper than just your parent linear function, right? Your parent linear function is, would go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Like that. But 5 over 2, it would be steeper, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. It would look like this. Okay, so it would be a much steeper slope than your parent function, which just has a slope of 1. So now let's finish graphing this down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. And when I connect these, that is what this line graphed on the coordinate plane looks like. And that concludes your notes over just 
Graphing linear functions review for Algebra 2, day 1. This is about four days worth in Algebra 1, so if you need help with that, again, just go back to those videos from Algebra 1, and hopefully that will clarify any questions you have. Good luck!